Hey everyone, hope you are all doing well as we near the end of 2022 and I hope all of you have a good holiday season as we enter the year 2023. In this video, we're gonna be specifically looking at the center section of the Arma Limitless V2. We're gonna ditch the stock spool gear that came with the Limitless V2, which is a 39 tooth spool, and we're gonna go with a 45 tooth pinion gear. That's right, we're gonna actually swap a spool gear for a typical gear that would go on the motor's drive shaft. To give you a quick summarization and a bit of history as to why we're making the move from a 39 tooth spur gear to a 45 tooth spur gear, we have to understand the setup a little bit. We're going to use this Castle 1721 2400 kV motor. This is a 2400 kV motor. We're going to match that with an 8S LiPo battery pack. This is going to give us some pretty insane maximum RPM from this setup. And if if we worked with the 39 tooth stock spur gear, the smallest pinion gear you'd be able to match it up with this specific gear is a 32 tooth. Any smaller and the distance between the motor and the center drive shaft is too small. So we have to actually increase the distance there and the only way you can get into that minimum range is with a 32 tooth pinion. Problem with that setup is it's going to be a 200 plus mile per hour potential setup for us. And that is simply not what we're after here. We want to achieve a speed that is much slower than what that setup could offer us. So that's why we're moving to this 45 tooth spur. Now, one of the issues that we have is these two gears actually are going to be very different as we lay it into the center drive section. And we'll see exactly why that is very shortly. The main main issue here is that the distance between each gear in terms of their width is different. So the spacing that the new gear is going to occupy is greater than what the original spool gear here consumes on the drive shaft. And we need to make up for that as we go and locate parts and components on our new V2 drive shaft. So let's grab the V2 drive shaft and show exactly what kind of modifications that have been done already on this drive shaft. So here you can see that there is a new ground section here as a flat spot where the original flat spot was on this shaft. Now what I've done is I've actually lengthened the section of this because I will have to get the set screw in this general area. And the other modification that I did, and I got a little bit carried away with this here, is I ended up making another flat spot on the other side. Now I don't need to have two flat spots, but it's always good to have a little bit extra bite for the second set screw that is going to be used on this gear. You can see we got one set screw on the top here, and if I reverse it 180 if I flip it around we got another set screw there as well and I want to make sure that we're using both because we're going to be transmitting a lot of torque through this shaft and I would prefer that nothing ends up slipping and we can do that by just creating a very subtle flat spot here in the opposite side of the drive shaft so now that we have that figured out we can start to lay components onto this drive shaft in essentially the same order that we had originally so the first thing that's going to go on here is is a V2 bearing. We can slide our bearing on. Then we're gonna use the original spacer. Now this is where we start to get into multiple different options as to what we have to do here. This is going to be one area where you can, if you wish, grind this down to produce a smaller spacer and allow us to get a little bit more room for the remaining components to get onto the shaft. Now I did not choose this approach. I didn't wanna go and change and alter the original gear, so what I decided to do is use a washer and modify the washer instead. So the next component before we get into what that washer looks like is going to be our 45 tooth uh, pinion or it is a pinion gear but it is going to be now our new spool gear and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold everything in position and I will now just tighten it up briefly so we get an understanding as to where this will be. So with that now tight on both sides here, what I'm going to do is place our next component onto our shaft. Now, typically it would be the original red spacer, the small spacer that would go on here. However, there will be a problem if I end up doing that. So rather than going through and using the spacer, I had to go and make my own washer in order to get a smaller width here. So this washer is going to measure just over a millimeter in thickness, as opposed to the small spacer, which is two millimeters thick. 
So with this small washer placed on here, I now have enough room to get the bearing on. And then from there, I just have the drive dog coupler that will sit in the proper location. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take our set screw and I'm gonna drop it into the drive dog coupler here. I'm gonna mock up this. I'm not gonna go and put thread locker on any of the set screws. There's three of them that have now been engaged. I'm gonna do that as the last step in the process. So now that we have all of that matched, I can then see if it's going to fit and it does, and then if I go and check the actual clearance, I don't have a lot of motion in that center drive shaft section. Now it's important to know that you don't also want it to be super tight. You wanna have a little bit of motion in the axial direction just to know that there's nothing that's going to be too tight and binding within that section. Otherwise you might be pressing up against a bearing, putting a little bit of added pressure there, which can increase the amount of heat. And as we know, we're gonna get some incredible performance out of these vehicles and we don't need extra heat anywhere. That's gonna to lead to premature failure of potential components. So essentially that's how we set our center drive shaft up. We just need to now put in the dog bones that go from the center section to our front differential and from our center drive shaft section to our rear differential and the setup is essentially complete. So we got one of those drive shafts now partially in place. We got both of the drive shafts replaced in the vehicle. We got our center section all mocked up. All I have left to do now that I got everything mocked up and everything looks good is to place thread locker on all the set screws on that center drive section. There were three. I'm gonna go ahead, Loctite those and move on to the very last step where we can check to make sure that our spacing for the gear on our motor is going to match up very well with our new spur gear. So let's go and throw some Loctite on there and we'll check out our pinion gear. One thing that I didn't mention before is that I have already tested the pinion gear that we're going to use and just make sure that everything lines up and you can find a good spot on the shaft where it can mesh in full contact and full width. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like right now. So we slide the pinion gear here onto the motor shaft and I'm gonna bring the motor right up to the the spur gear and you can see that there is a good amount of clearance between the gear and the actual motor mount. There's a few things that I'm looking for when I do this mock-up. I just wanna make sure that we have full contact so the width of the pinion gear is 100% matching the width of our spur gear and I wanna make sure that there's enough of the pinion gear that is seated onto the motor shaft. We don't want that pinion gear hanging off the very end of the motor shaft. And at the same time, we don't want that pinion gear up right against our motor mount. So once I check all of those clearances, I am good to go. At this point, I can go ahead and make sure I get some Loctite on those set screws, get some Loctite here on our motor mount, set the gearing position in place correctly, and then I can start to reassemble all of the top section of the Limitless here, and I am ready to run. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing exactly how we can take a pinion gear, modify the assembly of components that go onto our drive shaft to make it work. This essentially opens up the field of play for gearing specifically, on the Limitless to a massively wide range of options. This allows us to get a good bump in terms of the tooth count on our spur gear from 39 to 45, allowing us to run a much smaller pinion gear optimally getting the gearing that we need to hit about the 130 to 150 mile per hour range. And that is with a 27 tooth pinion gear with our 45 tooth spur. This is also gonna give us, if you look at the motor mount here, a lot of options so we can move up in our pinion gear to hit higher top speeds. So you can see, we can go to a significantly larger pinion gear to get even more speed out of this setup. This is going to be essentially the smallest amount of speed that we can get from this particular setup. Setup, but it is a lot better than the stock setup which offers that stock factory 39 tooth spool. That's it for now guys. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.